Paul Nanatulia, a research specialist with the Africa Center for Strategic Studies here in Washington, says the DRC is not a stable government in part because of serious allegations of fraud in the election in 2018 that brought Teshikedi to office and more concerns about his re-election last year. While Teshikedi and his supporters have rejected those allegations, many international and domestic election observers have expressed concerns. Nanatulia tells the VOA's Carol Van Dam there could be more attempts to oust the DRC government. Because in Congo you have all the ingredients of this. Can't deliver proper elections, can't deliver security, can't deliver laws that can allow rule of law, can't deliver laws that can allow uh, citizen expression and independent institutions as provided for in the Sun City Agreement. When you have a situation like that, you are bound to have that kind of activity, right? Okay, embedded in the Congo, entrenched in that country, is this kind of a, this kind this kind of a thing. It's not the last time we're going to see it. Shizuketi was re-elected for a second term as president in December, but he has yet to name a government. Even six weeks after appointing a prime minister, do you think that part of the unrest or the dissatisfaction among citizens is things like that? Look, symbolic government produces symbolic elections, right? The East African forces that the government called in to pacify the Eastern DRC were kicked out of the country less than a year after they deployed. And now the United Nations forces have been requested to leave. What has the government put in place as a measure to supposedly get back security in that part of the country? It's recruiting militias. These militias are engaging in the same predatory activity that the Congolese army engages in and that all these other mishmash of 140 rebel groups are engaging in. In that kind of scenario, you are going to have very sharp and intense anti-government feeling and anti-government sentiment. And anti-government sentiment can express itself in many ways. It can, people can attack government installations. They can attack a state house. They can attack a police stations and stuff like that. This is what happens when you have the kind of symbolic situation that you just talked about earlier. The U.S. ambassador has said in a post on social media that she's very concerned by reports that American citizens were allegedly involved. I mean, is this going to ramp up tensions between the U.S. and the DRC? Well, it depends on how the the DRC wants to use it. If, in case, in a hypothetical scenario, if there's something the DRC is unhappy about, the United States, then presumably this is something they might use in their quarrel with the United States if they want to extract some concession from the U.S. That was uh, Paul Nanatulia, a research specialist with the Africa Center for Strategic Studies. He was speaking to VOA's Carol Van Dam in Washington. Somalia's disaster agency on Tuesday issued a warning about the impending tropical cyclone system, which is expected to make landfall in the southwestern and southern regions, as well as the capital of Mogadishu. People living near the coastal areas are advised to be on high alert and exercise extreme caution, the Somali Disaster Management Agency said in its advisory, which was issued in Mogadishu. Heavy rains and flash floods have caused damage and displacement across Somalia since the beginning of this year. According to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, as of May 14th, an estimated 225,760 people have been affected by the heavy rains and flooding of the good season, including nearly 38,730 people who have been displaced or relocated. The heavy rains and flooding have also resulted in the loss of livelihoods, including livestock and cropland, and the destruction of small businesses. The damage to water sources as well as water, sanitation and hygiene facilities is exacerbating a cholera outbreak that has recorded at least 10,640 cases, including 120 deaths occur across seven states, according to the World Health Organization.